face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to our top five video from your true, of course, the Scarender. And today's video, we are going to look, of course, the worst Pokemon gen introduced here in Generation 7. And the second top five is going to, of course, going to be about the best. But with that said, there are a few Pokemon here in this generation that missed the mark in one fashion or another. And also, as always, should be mentioned, they're, of course, based on my personal preferences and uh, my opinions, basically. So if you disagree, then, you know, that's, that's good and all. If anything, there are actually more than five Pokemon that may or may not actually be disappointing this generation. I wanted to cut it to five mainly because I couldn't fill a list of ten. That's a good thing, actually, but I still feel that these five that I'm going to introduce you guys have a reason for being here, for just basically not becoming the hype that they were built on, for build, of course, doing. Uh, so, of course, with that said, let's start with, of course, the number five spot. At number five, we have a Lowland Sand Slash. And just in general, can we talk about what a disappointment a Lowland Pokemon were overall? Um, quite honestly, not building on their base stats or anything like that, and very, very few shifts made it a lot of these Alolan Pokemon just simply didn't become that good. Alolan Sashler sends out are probably the one that definitely should have been a lot better. Uh, Ice and Steel type are quite famous for, of course, their priority moves, and Alolan Sashler not getting any of those? That's bad. While it does get Rapid Spin and, of course, get um, Evil Lug around for his money, it does, of course, lack recovery, and, of course, Slush Rush while a good ability is still maybe not a savior for it. So Alolan Sandslash just stands out as you know, kind of the mod that shouldn't have been here in the first place because it just it has so many issues going into it. Of course, weak to priority with of course fighting and of course four times weak to fire and ground. While a few weaknesses is still kind of a bad thing since of course it is slow. And these typings that it is weak to are also slow Pokemon, but it definitely can beat it 1-1. So being slower than a Pokemon that can want to kill you is a bad thing, and usually represent, of course, defensive typing. It's even worse being wanted KO by actually quite a common move. But like I said, there is biggest issue is that it doesn't get the priority, which is so famous for these typings combined to have. Had it had dual priority, it would have been a great Pokemon. But now it just stands out as a crippled Pokemon who needs speed desperately to even do something. And that is never a good thing. At number four, we have a Lolan Radicate. So yeah, second Alolan Pokemon. And uh, yeah. It has a big issue, and that comes with what actually what I decided to shift, of course, the base stats with Alone Eradicate. They made it slower. And I do believe the most or the biggest issue Alone Eradicate has, of course, its unique Pokemon, is that it isn't fast enough for being a quote unquote speed your Pokemon. It has been what's kind of holding its regular form back, and given our door type, we make it actually more fragile. It has a lot more weaknesses now, which means I have a lot of things I have to watch out for. Making it slower did not help. And uh, of course, Thick Fat, while a, you know, a decent ability, when you're as fragile as Eradicate is, it's not gonna save you. It's not like Pure Ugly, which of course, being speed, you're actually able to switch in and retaliate. You actually are forced to probably take another hit before you can hurt it. Sure, it still has Hustle, but trust me, Guts would have made so much more sense for it. And it should have been speedier, it should have been faster, I don't care if it's thick or, you know, fat. Haha, <laughs> that's a joke. But, quite honestly, I think they missed the mark quite a bit here with Radicate, but it's because this Pokemon should have been a lot better. Hell, it should at least have kept its speed and uh, be able to utilize the likes of Guts here. We are forced now to, of course, hustle, so it basically now is a worse Durant, and that is never preferable. It should have been at least as fast as Lipart, because at least then it would have been a Durant, but with another typing and you know with quick attack and sucker punch, yeah. That would have been of course greatly helpful. So Radicate kind of falls flat here, and it definitely is a very, very disappointing Pokemon. Consider that when I finally pick up a Pokemon that is famous for being bad and make it worse, yeah, that's then you probably shouldn't touch it in the first place. So on the first spot we have Incineroar, and before you of course leave that dislike, hear me out on this. Because I actually like Incineroar, and that's kind of the reason it's here in the first place. It just wasn't that good. I mean, when I saw Incineroar and realized that this is going to be a slow fire type, a uh, defensive fire type at that, or a wall breaking, I guess you'd say, uh, but definitely a focus on defensive would, of course, Intimidate being unlocked right now and uh, lacking recovery. 
This means that this is just a worse Arcanine with a worse defensive typing. And I mean, Dark Fire, it just makes so much sense that this would, would of course rival Houndoom, but instead it's just slower of Super Fragile. Its typing is not a good defensive typing, which just kind of builds on that why are you slow in the first place and not Sucker Punch either? I mean, Embor at least have that if you're gonna compare it to something else. So it all boils down to that. Well, you're forced to use Flame Charge, and with of course bad typing, defensive typing that with Fire Dark, you are kind of screwed. And I actually, like I said, I really, really like Incineroar. So seeing that it just falls flat here, just it makes me kind of sad because this Pokemon should have been a game changer. It will probably be one of the more forgotten, of course, starter Pokemon, of course, in this generation mainly because. It just isn't able to do anything another fire type aren't able to do already and probably better. If at least if it had a morning sun or anything like that, I could see it working. But now it comes down to that it has a very, very bad combination and a bad speed and barely can defend itself properly. And uh, yeah, it sucks because it should have been so much better. Hell, I would so much have wanted to see a physical Houndoom and not seeing that transpire. It actually had me a very, very disappointed this Pokemon. Coming up in my number two spot is probably a Pokemon that nobody should be, of course, surprised about. Vicavolt. <sighs> I mean, I don't know where to start with this Pokemon. I mean, clearly it's slow. Um, and it's it's very slow, like 40 base speed or something like that. It's, it's not good because of it. It has a very, very high special attack, which, granted, has it a bit more focus, you know, what it's able to do. But then you're weak to rocks and you need to set up agility to be, of course, relevant. The other ones I can, do, I can compare this to that I think are very, very relevant is Rapidos, which has, of course, Rock Polish, which is awesome, has a massive um, attack stat, but just aren't able to utilize it well due to its well being slower. And Vicavol kind of falls in the same area. And the thing is here, I wouldn't mind it being slow if it wasn't that this was probably one of the few Pokemon that it just deviated from the regular, of course, uh, bug status that they have. First of all, no Quiver Dance, which just perplexes me so much. It's such a missed opportunity because clearly this Pokemon needed it. But also, just they build it up, you know, it's being that this speedy Pokemon, the Pokedex entry kind of, and of course, enforces the idea that this is going to be a speedy thing. This is going to definitely be, you know, the offensive Galvantula we never got, basically. And then we see the stats and just like, yeah, that, that's a lie. And fuck you, Game Freak. Um, I'm being honest here. Vicavolt should have been a lot better than it ended up being. And it's so disappointing to see that this Pokemon is going to be just forgotten. Because it's just a verse Galventula. And in the end here, that's not what we asked for. We wanted something really good. And not even, like I said, you're getting you know, the normal things that, of course, Quiver Dance for every bug starter. Um, it just blows my mind. It's such a missed opportunity. Vicavolt should have been much, much more. And with that said, there are another Pokemon that should have been much, much more. Who's gonna, of course, fill the number one spot. And I do believe most of you guys think exactly which this Pokemon is. It's a Pokemon I am firmly disappointing at. So with my number one spot, I have Toe Cannon. <sighs> the thing is here, there are so many things that are so awesome with Toe Cannon. And that's the reason it is here. It's so cool. I like it. The design is so great. It's lore is so interesting and then you slapped on of course a normal flying type and that is i think you know when it had talon flame i think you know this is the turning point they get it the stutter bird does not have to suck it could actually be okay and uh, for quite some time i thought that this was going to be gave it skilling you know the showcase you no know, this is going to get bullet seed All right and it gets rock splash that's awesome it had a lot of things here which you made sense this is going to be an interesting pokemon and then they slap that typing on, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Mainly because, you know, they had this beak blast. You know, this new move, of course, which of course heated up the beak, awesome. Which you know, and of course leave a burn on the Pokemon. So a lot of people were speculating, you know, it should have been a fire type. Or in my regard, since of course it heated up the beak, and of course burn the Pokemon, I was thinking steel. I was so for a flying steel type offensive variant that that I was so sure it's gonna be a steel type. And then the show gets that normal typing, and I was like, no! Why? It makes no sense either. It, it, it clearly makes no sense having this Pokemon, of course, as just a regular, you know, the normal flying bird. You know, they would done, oh, it's done to death already. We just let's keep doing that, right? 
I really, really thought Game Freak had a bigger idea with this Pokemon. And now it's just gonna be one of those forgettable Pokemon because its typing just are a copy paste of whatever else has been done to death already. And the, the thing is here, it's not even the worst part. The, the thing is here that, you know, it's clearly defensive enough. Uh, it has a lot of attack going into it. So there are a thing, you know, it, the only thing that works against it is that it's clearly slow. And it would have made sense for Steel type to kind of be what Celestial really are. But with Rock Blast, it means that the fire typing actually are not necessarily able to deal with this Pokemon really well unless they outspeed it. I was really sure that this was what we were going with, but no. And I mean, it's not the worst Pokemon in this generation, I shouldn't say that, but it's definitely the Pokemon that made me the most disappointed because it's such a missed opportunity. So Cannon should have been the game changer. Finally, you know, that steal of flying type again, but no. Let's give that to a legendary and then you just, ah, it, it had me super disappointed. It still has me disappointed. Three weeks after the game and I still can't get over it. I'll probably never get over it because, of course, the lore enforces so much for this Pokemon that doesn't transpire in the game. And it did have a Vika Vault, but it does believe, I, I, I do believe, I think that it matters more for a Pokemon that clearly has something going for it that it just ignored. And so Cannon kind of stands out at just that. You super, super disappointing Pokemon overall. So, yeah, that's the list, guys. I really hope you guys appreciated this. And if you did, of course, as always, make sure to leave a like. And which Pokemon do you think were the worst for this generation introduced? Um, as stated here, I mean, my list is definitely more about personal preferences and, of course, more about the disappointment of Pokemon that just wasn't what I was hoping for. And uh, with that said, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, as always, really. And I'll see you next top 5 with, of course, the best of Generation 7. Until then, of course, take care.